If you, like so many people, have tried dieting but nothing seems to work, you could be suffering from an actual addiction to sugar. That's right, to sugar. Here with more on that uh, is the author of Why Diets Fail, neuroscientist Dr. Nicole Avina is here. Hi. Well, it's good to have you. Nice Happy to be here. Let's talk a little bit about how addictive sugar can be. Yeah, so there's lots of new research that's coming out that's saying that this isn't just something people are making up. People yeah. talk about being chocoholics, addicted to cookies. Well, there's research that shows it's real. People who are eating excess amounts of sugar can show signs of tolerance, withdrawal, craving, all the things we see when people become addicted to drugs like alcohol and nicotine. We're seeing them with see, food as with well. With food as well. Yeah. Specifically sugar in Specifically this case. Specifically sugar. What is what the... You, I was going to say, what is the difference between having a sugar addiction and just having a craving for sugar? Well, is cravings, there yeah, there's a big difference because cravings are a natural part of the appetitive process. We're supposed to crave foods. It signals to our brains that we're deficient maybe in some nutrient and we should seek out a food that has that nutrient. But we begin to crave things for reasons that aren't coming from our body. It's coming instead from our brains. And so when we're constantly overeating sugar, we get in this cycle of, overeating that releases chemicals in the brain that cause us to then crave the sugar for all the wrong reasons. What happens to the brain when you have too much sugar and what kind of chemicals are you talking yeah, what, about? What goes on? Because yeah, you said this is yeah. all like addiction. Yeah. Or, right. Or so, not, not, so, uh, I mean like caffeine or nicotine. Yeah, or so in the addiction literature we know that certain neurochemicals like dopamine and opioids, those are two of the primary neurochemicals that get messed up when we do drugs and alcohol. And research shows that the same neurochemicals are getting altered when people eat excess amounts of sugar, too. So we're really wow. seeing lots of overlap. Okay, so uh, what I tried to do is, because I try to limit, and we're gonna talk about some of the foods that it's yeah. in that I'm surprised, but what I, I reach for a substitute. Yep. What effect does the substitute, is a research on that saying I'm taking, um, yeah, so this is where there's. The I wish there was good news. Was a little bit <laughs> I mean, like. Things like stevia from natural derivatives of whatever. That's right. not it's well. The, the same research thing. shows that it's the sweet taste that seems to be producing these effects on the brain and leading us to want to consume more and more. So when you have an artificial sweetener, maybe it doesn't have as many calories, but it's still reinforcing the desire to go out and get so sugar it's our for the taste sweetness. Bud, that wants the sweetness. It is. So it's not necessarily a chemical thing at that point? Where right, our, it's the taste buds that's sending signals to our brain that are really our brain is the boss, tells us what to do and how to act, and our brain tells us what uh, to eat. Can I, I, I wanna say just because we had the other day, you made a really wonderful dish, it was the waffles with the asparagus mm -hmm. and the and it was a savory, mm. but my brain wanted to taste sweet because it was a waffle. Right. And for that reason, when you asked me, do you remember you said, what'd you think of it? And I said, well, it was good, I just don't know what it's supposed to be, like, because my brain was wanting it to be a sweet. Well, so it's the same thing. We're, our taste buds are saying we want sweet we're gonna go after sweet. right and most of the time you've been conditioned to have waffles with pancake syrup or some yeah. sort of syrup so your brain tastes waffles and it expects to get sweetness because it expects to get pancake right. syrup. let me ask when when you have too much sugar you have this rush we have this energy and then like 15 minutes later I, I get it I don't know about you but I get a th pounding thumping headache from yeah. it and then the only thing that seems to cure it is to have more sugar right. is this like is this a drug this is the vicious spiral that really emerges so we consume sugar we get this jolt of blood glucose in our blood it produces well, insulin the headache. well that's the spiking of the blood glucose then quickly dropping because when oh. you consume a lot of sugar in a small amount of time which unfortunately happens with some of the products like we have here you're getting excess sugar to your brain really quickly and then your blood levels are going to drop right down that's what causes the headache well, we, feel we have some over. here yeah. and then I'm very surprised because you know we're taught we talked about you know that birthday cake year in and year out for the yes. little kids we know that's laced with sugar but some of these things are sold to us as if their health products. Right, so we have a lot of seemingly healthy products, healthy snack ideas, yeah. and unfortunately they contain lots of sugar. So we have, for instance, some, you know, waters and bars and mm -hmm. other types of yogurts and things like that that can have between six to eight teaspoons of sugar in them per serving. Now, the World Health Organization wants us to only have maybe six teaspoons a day. So we're six talking about yeah. Six, well, don't we wow. get a natural sugar from? Let's. I don't know if this is reconstituted juice, but fresh orange juice. Right. Or, or, or is that bad sugar for us? Isn't that natural sugar? It's natural, but you have to remember when you juice something, you take all the fiber out of it, the pulp, mm -hmm. all the mm -hmm. fiber and those other nutrients that can mitigate the effects of the sugar. And so, if you're gonna juice, I would suggest throw the whole orange in there, peel it, and mix it all up, so you're still gonna get that fiber and have that that okay. grit to it. So, so we, because I always go for the pulp free, because I don't. 
like the yeah, pulp. Yeah, The pulp's how, good. How, um, we were talking about this earlier. When I look on the back of a label, I just go to the sugars and I go, oh, there's, it's three sugars. That doesn't right. seem like much. But you say that can be misleading. It is because the problem is there's 56 different names for sugar. Sugar is really an umbrella term. Mm -hmm. So we really need to know all the different names for these things. So, for example, uh, things like dragon fruit extract. I think mm -hmm. that's what? one of the ingredients in here. What is dragon that? fruit what is extract. That? Dragon fruits are, you know, a, a fruit. Have you ever had a dragon fruit? I have not. I don't oh, even know. Oh, it's delicious. What is. What it's is it? it's a fruit. It's available in Asian countries. I had it when I was in Hawaii last time. Delicious fruit, but it's an extract. So that means that they're really just juicing the dragon fruit, pulling the sugar out and using that as the sweetener. Oh. So be careful of any type mm. of fruit extract or fruit concentrate. If you see that on the label, that's really just a fancy word for sugar. Okay, so there's a whole list. There's 56 of these. Where do we find that list if we're curious to? Well, I have it actually in my book, Why Diets okay. Fail, and on the yeah, web, on my website as well. Okay, fantastic. So can we break this cycle of addiction? Can we break it? We can. It's oh. going to involve work, okay. <laughs> but right. it can be done. Yeah. So the first thing we can do is to figure out what foods that we want to give up, what foods yeah. have sugar in them, and come up with sensible replacements. Find the hidden sugar and figure out ways you can get it Will out you, of your diet. Would you come back and we can talk about some of the translations if you're eating this much sugar, what's a substitute? Because that's important yes. to have. It's like you tell people, no, don't do this, but you want them to go to yes. Right. And, and yes in my book, I offer some sort of tradebacks of if you like this, go for this instead. Perfect. It's a healthier option. And if you would option. like more information on Dr. Nicole, you can go to drnicolevina.com and go to our Home and Family Facebook page for a bonus video.